In this video, we will talk about the factors that lead to smoking, the dangers of smoking, and the methods of quitting. According to the World Health Organization, more than 8 million people per year die for smoking-related reasons. While 7 million of these deaths are caused by smoking, 1.2 million are caused by exposure to cigarette smoke with passive smoking. One in two smokers will die from a smoking-related disease. Every 15 cigarettes you smoke will cause a mutation in your body. Mutations are how cancers start. If you could see the damage, you'd stop. Smoking addiction is examined under two separate subtitles as psychological and physical addiction. Physical factors in cigarette addiction. Nicotine, which is responsible for physical addiction, is a colorless, odorless and highly toxic substance. It is even used in pesticides. In smoking, it passes blood indirectly and very slowly. Metabolic rate and intake rate are balanced, so it does not accumulate in the body and as a strong drug, tolerance develops after a while. Therefore, although it is very toxic and continuously taken by cigarette smokers, it does not cause a rapid death. However, the use of nicotine replacement therapies with smoking may lead to overdose complications and death. Psychological factors in cigarette addiction. In fact, the act of smoking is an infectious psychiatric disease, it is transmitted by seeing and hearing from generation to generation. From the moment we were born, tens of thousands of subconscious registers belonging to billions of smokers around us and they get into our minds as a child thanks to the pitfalls established by cigarette companies to strengthen them. This is actually a mass brainwashing program. First, we are believed that smoking is a pleasure support tool through our smokers elders, then cartoons and finally movies. Our beliefs and expectations are strengthened with socio-cultural projects such as Marlboro Formula One races, Camel Trophy, Parliament Cinema Club. All the scenes and hidden advertising work have been set up so that we perceive smoking as something that should happen at every stage of life. And all of them have spent trillions of dollars to date. Brainwashing means believing something unreal as if it were real. Beliefs have been shown in placebo studies to directly affect neurotransmitters secreted from the brain. In M. R. Spectroscopy studies, it has been proven that placebo causes the same rate of neurotransmitter release as the active substance and signals in the brain in the same anatomical regions. As a result, the psychological dependence of smoking is created by brainwashes. The most striking evidence that smoking addiction is largely psychological in our daily lives is pregnancy, fasting and long journeys. Many smokers can travel to the ocean, which takes 10 to 12 hours without any physical difficulties, because the aircraft is conditioned not to drink until it lands. As soon as he gets off the plane, he wants to burn his cigarette, and if he encounters an obstacle, etc., he gets bored and starts to experience all the symptoms that he did not experience for 12 hours, such as nervousness, tension, palpitations, sweating, hand tremors and not being able to gather his head in seconds. However, the main problem is that the period of conditioning has not expired. In other words, withdrawal symptoms that are thought to be caused by physical addiction are really felt, but it is against psychological addiction that pulls the trigger. There is a great deal of scientific research and evidence regarding drinking expectation and conditioning. Circulation, when you smoke, the poisons from the tar in your cigarettes enter your blood. These poisons in your blood then make your blood thicker and increase chances of clot formation. Increase your blood pressure and heart rate, 
making your heart work harder than normal. Narrow your arteries, reducing the amount of oxygen-rich blood circulating to your organs. Together, these changes to your body when you smoke increase the chance of your arteries narrowing and clots forming, which can cause a heart attack or stroke. Brain, if you smoke, you are more likely to have a stroke than someone who doesn't smoke. In fact, smoking increases your risk of having a stroke by at least 50%, which can cause brain damage and death. And, by smoking, you double your risk of dying from a stroke. One way that smoking can increase your risk of a stroke is by increasing your chances of developing a brain aneurysm. This is a bulge in a blood vessel caused by a weakness in the blood vessel wall. This can rupture or burst which will lead to an extremely serious condition known as a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a type of stroke, and can cause extensive brain damage and death. The good news is that within two years of stopping smoking, your risk of stroke is reduced to half that of a smoker and within five years it will be the same as a non-smoker. Heart, smoking damages your heart and your blood circulation, increasing the risk of conditions such as coronary heart disease, heart attack, stroke, peripheral vascular disease damaged blood vessels and cerebrovascular disease damaged arteries that supply blood to your brain. Carbon monoxide from the smoke and nicotine both put a strain on the heart by making it work faster. They also increase your risk of blood clots. Other chemicals in cigarette smoke damage the lining of your coronary arteries, leading to furring of the arteries. In fact, smoking doubles your risk of having a heart attack. And if you smoke you have twice the risk of dying from coronary heart disease than lifetime non-smokers. The good news is that after only one year of not smoking, your risk is reduced by half. After stopping for 15 years, your risk is similar to that of someone who has never smoked. Stomach, smokers have an increased chance of getting stomach cancer or ulcers. Smoking can weaken the muscle that controls the lower end of your gullet, or esophagus, and allow acid from the stomach to travel in the wrong direction back up your gullet, a process known as reflux. Smoking is a significant risk factor for developing kidney cancer, and the more you smoke the greater the risk. For example, research has shown that if you regularly smoke 10 cigarettes a day, you are one and a half times more likely to develop kidney cancer compared with a non-smoker. This is increased to twice as likely if you smoke 20 or more cigarettes a day. Skin, smoking reduces the amount of oxygen that gets to your skin. This means that if you smoke, your skin ages more quickly and looks gray and dull. The toxins in your body also cause cellulite. Smoking prematurely ages your skin by between 10 and 20 years, and makes it three times more likely you'll get facial wrinkling, particularly around the eyes and mouth. Smoking even gives you a sallow, yellow-gray complexion and hollow cheeks, which can cause you to look gaunt. The good news is that once you stop smoking, you will prevent further deterioration to your skin caused by smoking. Bones, smoking can cause your bones to become weak and brittle. Women need to be especially careful as they are more likely to suffer from brittle bones, osteoporosis, than non-smokers. Lungs, your lungs can be badly affected by smoking. Coughs, colds, wheezing and asthma are just the start. Smoking can cause fatal diseases such as pneumonia emphysema and lung cancer. Smoking causes 84% of deaths from lung cancer and 83% of deaths from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, a progressive and debilitating disease, 
is the name for a collection of lung diseases including chronic bronchitis and emphysema. People with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease have difficulties breathing, primarily due to the narrowing of their airways and destruction of lung tissue. Typical symptoms of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease include increasing breathlessness when active, a persistent cough with phlegm and frequent chest infections. Whilst the early signs of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease can often be dismissed as a smoker's cough if people continue smoking and the condition worsens, it can greatly impact on their quality of life. You can slow down the progression of the disease and stopping smoking is the most effective way to do this. Mouth and throat, smoking causes unattractive problems such as bad breath and stained teeth, and can also cause gum disease, damage your sense of taste, and can lead to oral thrush. The most serious damage smoking causes in your mouth and throat is an increased risk of cancer in your lips, tongue, throat, voice box and gullet, or esophagus. More than 93% of oropharyngeal cancers, cancer in part of the throat, are caused by smoking. The good news is that when you stop using tobacco, even after many years of use, you can greatly reduce your risk of developing head and neck cancer. Once you've been smoke-free for 20 years, your risk of head and neck cancer is reduced to that of a non-smoker. Reproduction and fertility, smoking can cause male impotence as it damages the blood vessels that supply blood to the penis. It can also damage sperm, reduce sperm count and cause testicular cancer. Up to 120,000 men from the UK in their 20s and 30s are impotent as a direct result of smoking, and men who smoke have a lower sperm count than those who are non-smokers. For women, smoking can reduce fertility. One study found that smokers were over three times more likely than non-smokers to have taken more than one year to conceive. The study estimated that the fertility of smoking women was 72% that of non-smokers. Smoking also increases your risk of cervical cancer. People who smoke are less able to get rid of the HPV infection from the body, which can develop into cancer. Smoking while you are pregnant can lead to miscarriage, premature birth, stillbirth and illness, and it increases the risk of caught death by at least 25%. If we want to stop smoking after all this bad picture. In fact, smoking is easily avoided with these two simple studies. Psychologically, clearing our psychologically unconscious emotions, thoughts and feelings that is, the sensory triggering the habitual sensation that we have created, through meditation. This is not a process that will take days or months. Physically, to reduce the rate of nicotine that physically pushes us to smoke. For example, if the nicotine value in a cigarette pack is 0.8 mg, by drinking the same number of cigarettes for one week, the second week continues until the third week without changing the number of cigarettes smoked with 0.6 mg nicotine value. Smoking in the third week of 0.4 mg of nicotine significantly reduces the dependence on nicotine. Then you will see that you don't want to smoke. Another method for resetting nicotine is by Aurisinin's method. In this method, the nicotine value the body receives is reset and reluctance occurs.